Hi, welcome to The Gangsplainer. I'm Jeff The Gangsplainer and today I'm gangsplaining Sierra West. So Sierra West has four different modes. I am just going to do the gangsplaining explanation for the Apple Hill, which is mode one. This is the one that they use to teach the game. So that's the one that I'm going to also use to teach the game. The other three modes are Boats and Banjos, Gold Rush, or Outlaws and Outposts. They have their own decks of cards. That's these cards just here, plus some other stuff as well. But this is set up for the Apple Hill. The game in essence is a deck builder. So you have a deck of cards, you will deal yourself three cards. You then need to make a decision about which ones are showing. So what's going to happen is one of them is going to sit like that. So you'll only see the middle bit and these other middle bits that aren't showing will not be seen by you on your trail. Anything that has this red around it must happen. So if it's visible, so for example, it's sitting there, when you get to here, that must happen. Each of these icons have a thing. I'll tell you what they are in a moment. So that is how the cards are placed into your trail. What now happens is that each of these guys, they have a slightly different outline to each other, own a trail. So this guy, the one with the hat, owns the grass trail. The one that looks like a regular meeple owns the desert trail. They can move to any spots going from left to right along that trail that they wish to and collect what is there. So if this guy goes here, I put him on top of two of those stone resources. So he would collect in two stone resources. He could then move to here where there's a spade and I'll talk about what the spades do in a moment if he wished, but he probably doesn't want to do that. He might want to go there and get two of these food resources. And then I might come back to this guy and move him along and he's standing on top of one boot. The boot allows him to move up the mountain. So he can go one spot up the mountain. Uh, he's standing on one of the cards when he does that. If I stopped and used either of these icons, it's going to cost me one resource. So what I could do is I could stop there to trade in one of them for a wood resource. I didn't have to do that, but I could choose to. I could have chosen where it was this guy's moving to stop here where there's a spade, spend a resource to enact that spade. What does a spade do? I'm glad you asked. Either, once you've managed to work your way all the way up the mountain, the card that your guy is standing on, if you make a spade happen, you use that spade to collect the card. He then goes back to the bottom of the hill or mountain. This card can then be added to the cards that you are about to put out and be put on the top, or it can just be put on top of the discard pile so you deal with it next time through. The other thing is, if both of these guys were standing on the card that's going to be taken, he digs it up and comes back and takes the card. This one gets thrown back to the bottom of the mountain, but he gets one of these double boot tokens. They're useful because boots, you'll notice they're single boots. There are double boots in some of the cards and in some of the positions, but they need to be used straight away. So if I come across a single boot, that enables me to walk up one level of the mountain. If I come across a double boot, it would allow me to walk up two levels of the mountain. That one allows me to just use a double boot at any point at which I wish. So I don't even have to be on boots. I can go, oh, double boot poem, I will move up two levels of the mountain and pass that back in. The other thing that happened when these guys got thrown back down was I've uncovered some other cards. So this card flips over, it's an apple card. It would get thrown into this row and then a new card is flipped over. So there's always at least two cards that people are going for. Obviously when this one gets taken off, that apple card would get thrown down here, that would get flipped over and that would get flipped over. So suddenly there's three cards to be building towards. The other thing that you may wish to use boots for is for your cart. So what you get to do is if you use a boot, let's say this guy goes here, I could spend one boot, which is that one, and one resource, which is that one, to move my cart along one level. The reason I would need to or want to move my cart along this track is because of these bonuses. What's gonna happen at the end of the game, you will have moved up a whole bunch of things on this track. 
each level is worth one extra. This multiplier multiplies that. So if you have one of your tokens up to four and one of them up to two, for example, that at the moment is worth six points. If you've managed to get your cut to here, which is a two time multiplier, that's now worth 12 points. And if you've managed to get all the way to the end, that's worth 24 points. You'll notice that the first couple of movements have single boot markings. He has a double boot, and from there forward, it's all double boot. So you're going to need to see the double boots to be able to move forward. You also need to give up the resources. There's only one resource being given up here, two and three. Suddenly here and here, we need to give up two boots, but we also need to give up one of each resource. It can't just be any random resource. And going into that end spot, you're giving up the two boots, but you're giving up two of each resource. Moving back down here, when you step on the spot mark with the mule, you'll gain this. There is only one of them. What he does is he allows gold to be turned into any resource if you manage to get some gold. Notice you can't move it back the other direction. And he can also be used in what I'm about to get to. So when they get to the end of their tracks, and you can do it with one before you get the other one to the end of the track, it's okay. But they're at the end of the tracks, what they now do is you can move one of them up here Notice there's two of the legs of food and one wood. So you put him up here, you turn that in, that now allows you to move your red token up one marker. If you were to put this one over here, say for example, if you actually had that stuff, so two of the concrete and a wood, pass them in, that allows you to push up one on the gray track. So with these, just be aware that only one player can be on the top space of these three. So if the red one is there, blue, the highest he can go is here. Once you are at the top, if you get that, that track again, because of the cards, you take the resource that is listed above the top of the track that you would be moving up. On this one, this is the Apple one, both of the players can be at the top if they wish. What the middle one does, if you had some gold, two pieces of gold to be precise, theoretically you could move that to there, spend the two gold to move, say your cart's there, to move your cart forward one without having to pay the extra stuff in between. Other things to be aware of, I showed you earlier that there was a bear with a red outline. If I had set up the board like this, when I come along, I, if I stop on the animal skin, what I'm doing is I am gaining whatever is showing on these tiles. You'll notice they're all upside down at the moment. When this one gets turned over, if I stopped there, I would get one of these as a resource to come in. I would have to stop here on the bear head, which would cost me a resource to stop. And that's all it does. There are some bonus tiles that will allow that to be something different. But for the essence of the game, whenever there's a bear head, you have to stop on it and it will cost you a resource. So having that flicked up, you probably go there, pick up the two resources, go here, you're going to lose one of the resources. So you've been able to gain an, a resource by using that. Once you get all five up, it's worthwhile going for that. Once this card gets into the mix and gets played, you'll notice it's talking about red apples and apples and apples. That's talking about this track. You'll notice that the apples are actually surrounded by the red outline, which means they have to happen. So if that one's in the middle, that would move one, two, three, up there. Anyone can use the apples that are available on that chart. So if you've pushed it up, it's worthwhile using them to bring it back down. And the way you'd bring that back down is if you spend that or a guy onto that, that allows you to, I've got three red apples, Trade it for three food. There's an affinity sign there, meaning it can happen any number of times. The apples comes back down to zero. If your guy stands on this marker, that will get you apples depending on where your cart is. So if my cart is here, everything below it, so that one isn't available yet, but here and here as well, gains two red and two green. So we could also use that for getting the legs of meat for those two if that happened to happen, but notice it's on the bottom right, so you're going to have to spend a resource to make that happen. If it was blue doing it, they would only push the green Apple Ford one because of where they are currently on the 
apple trail. Other things to watch out for. Using spades, so I showed you how to use a spade to dig up a spot on the mountain. You can also use spades to take one of these tiles. So this tile costs you a spade. This tile costs you a spade and a resource, as does that one. And this tile costs you a spade and one of these markers. So let's say he used his spade to get that one. All of these would now move down. If he used his spade to get this one, that would get discarded, and then those two would move down and we'd deal out another two. What each of the tiles does is referenced in the book. They read relatively straightforward, noticing that some of them have a green background, some of them have a brown background, which means Green ones go on the left-hand side, you can have up to three of them, and brown ones go on the right-hand side. Once you've filled in one of those areas, you cannot get any more into those areas. This one allows you to pay one fewer resource when taking one of these actions. So taking that bear action would not cost a resource if you're there. But here's the kicker. To get that to happen, you'd need to put the guy down there, which means this one can move along, and do the thing for free, can do this one for only one resource, but this guy at some point is gonna to have to come up here to be able to move through his path so you don't get that on the other path. And the same with these ones. This guy is going to stand below one of the three different cabins and enable him to get whatever it is. So chicken or the, the animal legs are gonna to have to come out of the green path these two actually don't affect that because you're going to need this guy to pick them up. The only other two spots are these two spots. So at the end of your turn, you'll bring your two guys back over. These two are things that happen on other people's turns. So when someone moves up one of these tracks, so say Blue managed to get that one moved up, I could drop one of my guys down into that to show it's been used to gain the resource below that track. The other thing is, once someone is using their, their setup, there are two animals showing. You can move down there, you're going to have to spend a resource to do it, and that'll have to be on the other player's spot, but that will enable him to turn over the marker with that animal, and that then allows him to gain stuff when he goes onto the fur. The game will finish when the last apple card comes out here, we'd finish the round, so this is just the first player marker, so if he manages to get the last apple card down, this guy will get one more turn, and then they all get one extra turn on top of that, so he'll have one more and then he'll have another, and that would be game. I think that I have covered everything or crossed everything off, uh, except for basic deck building rules. When this runs out, pick up these, shuffle them, and keep going. I'll leave that there. Please go ahead and watch the game's play to get a feel for how the game actually plays. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.